or revert to ellipses, which I see that you can work on. Or just put the dot, dot, dot garbage in there and show the pattern. <laughs> Choices. So you guys, you're making me nervous. Uh, should I go on or not? Can you quickly explain the dot, dot, dot garbage again? Because that was something that was kind of throwing me for a loop. Um, basically, how you would, so say you have like an A sub 1, and then you have your A sub K plus 1 or something like that is equal to dot, dot, dot garbage. So how check, are you going to? So check this out. Yeah. Here's an instance where it might pop up like that. You guys, by the way, this, this, that's an A and that's a 9. Anyway, given that this is a pattern, can we just conveniently write this in general form? Yeah. What would it look you have like? an A to the 3N. See, I agree with the 3N business. But what would equals, the rest of it look like? Um, yeah, I think the subscript here matches the very highest factor. So I got a 3N factorial times my A sub Okay. You don't have factorial on this one. I don't have factorials. I think I made a mistake. I think I'm missing some factors. If I had a factorial, I would have had the missing factor 7 here and the missing factor 4 here. I'm wrong. So I guess um, maybe I should just tell the reader that I've got the 3n times this predecessor. Maybe, hold, hold, that's wrong, that's a mistake. I said times this predecessor. Maybe skip the, its predecessor and pick it up at 3n minus, um, I don't know, 3 and then 3n minus uh, 1 less. And then show the pattern all the way down. Maybe the last two groupings, like nine times a times so, six times five times three times two. Why, why did you skip the three n minus two? Well, because when it comes to matching the superscript here, I'm talking too fast, Bradley. Okay. When it comes to because you don't have a seven there. It's matching this one, but notice that these are coming in chunks of pairs. Yes. And between the pairs, I'm missing the fact. Okay. And that's when I expanded out with my dot, 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 dot notation. I kind of missed every third factor. Okay, I see. You see it? Yeah, because you missed the seven, you missed the four, right? I did. So that's why you're skipping uh, a couple odd. terms there. Yes, or you can say I missed every third factor. Okay. So basically the first two parts with like the 3n three and 3n three minus 1, those show how the pattern is set up, like yes. a, 3, 6, and 9. Okay, so now let's say you want to find a sub 3, where n is basically equal to 1, right? Yes. How would you find that? Because that, that's the thing that, that's a little... All right. That was kind of throwing me off, you see? Cause it would I think a sub 3 is generated by, by looking at 2 times 3 times 5 times 6 times 9, all the way up to the very last factor, which, oh shoot, wait a minute. Doesn't so tell me when n is equal to... 1. So I think my very last factor is... And okay. so I think a sub 3 is going to be simply nothing more in this business. Oh, thank goodness. It matches what I have up here. Do you see what it did, Bradley? I went to 2 times 3 times 5 all the way up to this particular expression here. But if n is equal to 1, where I stop at that last factor 3, 3 is the highest factor in this list. That means I went too far. I guess I've only got these factors to the left. Or excuse me, these factors to the right. What's to the right of my game? Okay, so you only go up to 3. Um, because yeah, you got because your a sub 3, and, equal to one, that highest and then you go, that okay. Times one, which is three, that tells you where to stop. Okay, I see it, I see it. Please. That's, that's a very long expression, and even though this maybe is a little bit taller,
Is that your Sigma? What it, What is that? That's a capital pi. It's a capital product, pi. The product of each of those things. It's like something like product notation. Product notation, okay. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> is it in the book? I've forgotten about it. I disagree. Here's why. Because I think, we, you're, you're right there, we can fix it. We can make it work. Okay. But I think we're going to try to check for a sub 6. That we obtain by allowing n to be 2. And so that gives me as I range from 1 to 2 by 3n times 3n minus 1. But that, I'm sorry, I forgot my a sub 1, didn't I? But that would give me, let's see, when i is 1, it gives me a, a 3 times 2 times, now when i is equal to 2, that would be a 6 times, oh, you know, it does work. I, I said no because I was thinking I'd have to express that at a sub 3n minus 1. Oh, yeah, it should be. Why don't you start with the I sign? Because I knew what you meant. It didn't work because you've only got two factors in here, but the subscript jumps by a factor three. And so you get to skip the third term. So, or the third, I shouldn't say term. I meant to say you get to skip the third factor. Can we use that notation then, or do you want us to avoid that? No, I'm happy with this. I, just don't, I don't want you to use this kind of stuff on this. Only because somebody else reading it would not necessarily understand what the notation is. I mean, I understand it because I've seen it. But the uppercase pi notation is extremely standard. And I think if a student in this room never saw that notation, they'd probably figure out just off the cuff what it really represents. Whereas I think the double exclamation point is not a very natural notation. Can you, uh, can you maybe go over this notation really quick for us? I think I just did. Because okay. I think it represents the same thing that you and I have over here. Okay. This is just a different way of representing the same thing. So, are you guys ready to move, ready to move on then? What's the topic today? Um, solving DEs using power series. It's just this time I'm not going to use a simple case scenario. It's not going to be about a regular, excuse me, not going to be about an ordinary point. So, you guys humor me. If I have a DE that kind of looks like this, um, y double prime plus some function PNX times y prime plus some function yeah. Q, so Linux times y equals zero. If it is a case, that both P and N, I mean Q are analytic about x equals x naught, then I sometimes refer to that value of x called x naught as an ordinary point. However, if P of x and Q of x are not analytic about x equals x of naught, I might have classify x of naught as a singular point. And if this function P has in its denominator x minus x of naught no more than once, this has in its denominator x minus x of naught no more than twice, I might sub classify that singular point as a regular singular point. And if that's the case, I've got a whole new technique for solving some DEs. It's something I refer to as, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I don't know the spelling. For me, it's theory. And what I was hoping to do today, I was hoping everybody's caught up actually, by the way. But regardless, I was hoping to give you a few examples of using this new technique. So I made up a few examples. Let me take a peek. If I were to solve this DT, hold it, hold it, I've already made a mistake. I still have caught up my sleeve, I'm sorry. How about a 2xy double prime <coughs> plus x plus 1? y prime plus y is equal to 0. Oh, you know what, you guys? Shoot. I just blew it, didn't I? Darn it. This is an example like we had yesterday, because I think about x equals, for example, 0 is an ordinary point, because these two p's and q's are defined there. We have to add more x. Good, I think I'm wrong. Because I think if p is going to be in this form, notice the coefficient of y double prime is nice and clean. I could alternatively rewrite this equation as y double prime plus x plus 1 over 2x times y prime plus a 1 over 2x times y being set equal to 0. I think actually both p and q indeed are not analytic about x equals x uh, about x equals 0. And so I think 0 really is a, a singular point. As a matter of fact, I think it's a regular singular point because it occurs downstairs as a factor no more than once here, no more than twice there. 
And so I, te I think my technique that I'm going to dive into now is going to be different from my technique. So this function is not analytic, but there's a, at that point, because you can't express it as a power series, or because it's undefined? Both. I think because it's undefined at x equals 0, I cannot generate a power series. Think about it. Any power series is going to converge for free about the value of x for which it's centered. And if I have a power series set about x equals 0 for this function right here, this p of x, notice that the match in terms of the y values, they can't. It's not defined there. That function is not analytic at x equals 0. So okay. my problem, whenever we like divided a whole um, equation by x, or in this case 2x, you have to assume that it's not 0. So aren't we already making that assumption? Now, I agree that's true. But you're speaking in the language of solving the equations with algebra math these days. What I'm saying is that if you do have a DE in this form, no matter how you got there, I know you and I divide both sides by x, but no matter how you got there, if you have a DE in this form, then I might start classifying, I might start some classifying values, uh, say x or not, as an um, ordinary or something. That's what I'm suggesting. So then you can um, analyze things analytically, even if we obtain them in a way that is algebraically related? Yes. As a matter of fact, just because about x equals x of naught, these two coefficient functions are not defined or not analytic about x equals 0, maybe I could find a solution to DE that is centered about x equals 0. That is a power series representation. So you guys ready? Here's my new technique. So let me erase this. So question. I didn't write this down, but question. Let's see when I uh, find a power series solution for this DE centered about the one regular singular point, which clearly is at x equals 0. And I think I'm going to allow y to be equal to sum as n plays this game of my a sub n times x sub n. Oh, you know what? I can't. That's a technique I used yesterday when it came to ordinary points. Um, I'll change it a little bit. I'm going to add something to the next one. I'll add an r. This is my r business. <laughs> so Vince, you've seen this before? No, we were talking about it before because we were looking at the old exam. Uh, we saw some ah. and those are, and I was thinking, where did this come from? Okay. And then said we're going to try to fit it in anymore. So I think for me to pick this piece up off the ink or slap it in for y everywhere upstairs, i got to differentiate repeatedly. And to differentiate, i got y equals the sum as n range from 0 on up of my a of, hold on, I made a mistake again, cheapers. I meant n plus r times my a sub n times x to the n plus r minus 1. Oh, you guys, check this out. Yesterday in class, I didn't have the r. So that the coefficient was just an n. And if n of is equal to 0, this first term is 0, so I, I, I up my n by 1 to start at positive 1. I can't do it anymore. Because I don't know the r is necessarily equal to 0. So unlike my technique yesterday, I'm not going to re-index, or I'm not going to re-initiate the index variable. To differentiate, oh, something else. You guys, I'm sorry, I'm so clumsy today. I said I differentiated it, but I just didn't. If I were to differentiate twice, I think I did this. Is that going to be a, an n plus r minus 1 times n plus r times a sub n times x to the n plus r minus 1? Instead, <coughs> Jesus, minus 1. I'm sorry, Brad. I feel bad. <laughs> Why is that Monty Hollis? <laughs> I thought it was Monty Hollis because it's part of the prisoner's dilemma. I thought they were gay. How do you guys know who Monty Hollis is? Game theory. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that name in years. Yeah, for decades. <laughs> Isn't that the quintessential example? The Monty Hall film? No. Never mind. Have you ever heard of the Monty Hall film? No. What's my whole problem? I'm getting up this time. Okay, it says door the door question part. where he gives you You've heard the money door one, game, right? door two, yes. or door three. Yeah. And um, he asks you, what do you want to choose? You choose one. Then he'll pick one door, get rid of. He'll show it to you. He'll show that it's the zonk, you know, the, the mule that he has behind that door. So the question is, after he's shown you that, he's going to ask you whether you want to switch or not. Do you or do you not? Oh, sure. I'll switch. Well, then you won. Most likely. Most likely. 
because by by um, because previously it was two to one that you were gonna you were gonna get a zonk or uh -huh. two to three that you're gonna get a zonk and one to three that you're gonna get the prize. Right, right, right. So um, because he removed the um, the zonk previously, instead of it being now a 50-50 choice between the two, um, it's now a two to third three chance that you're going to get the prize and a one to third chance that you're going to get that zonk. How did you come across? How did you come across this? It was an episode of Game Theory. What's Game Theory? It's a fun little sh um, show that this um, this guy named Matthew Patrick makes on YouTube. In oh, which he, okay, that explains everything. Okay. Yeah, and and. He likes to cover video games and a lot, but um, at one time he was going to be on the modern uh, let's make or er, modern uh, what's it called? What's the game that name of that sh the price game is show? Right. Let's make a deal. The price That's, is right. The, the price is right. Yeah. The this shows is still in the air. Yeah. 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 The reason why I compared it to the modern health problem is because um, it's interesting because the uh, fundamental probability of winning or losing is fundamentally changed because a decision was made. Which is just sort of counterintuitive to uh, classic logic, which is why it falls under classic logic. Well, I, I do think probabilities can change if you already know another event has occurred. Do we have comments? It's, slight, it's slightly different. And I, I'm no. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I, I, that is slightly different. I'm just saying, uh, given that some event occurs, probability there could change the probability of another event occurring if you knew it occurred. It's called basic. But that wasn't really an event occurring. No, it it's not. It's not. That, that that's, that's, why it's so different. that's why people have a problem. After class, I will show you game theory. <laughs> Let's talk about non-analytic points. <laughs> I was reading a book. A mathematician was quoting him. He was in the East Coast. He was listening to news on Friday evening, local news. And the weather person said, you know, there's a 50% chance of rain Saturday, and there is a 50% chance of rain on Sunday. So the weather person said, there's a 100% chance of rain this weekend. <laughs> 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 That was an honest story. So you guys, let's check this out. I'm solving the. Who cares if I'm using a whole new technique? You know what's going to happen next. I'm going to pick these three weights stuff up forward, slap them here, here, and here, and I'll stop talking so fast. Because now I've got to mind my P's and Q's. I'll make my substitution. Diving in. I see that I've got a 2x. I have a new pen. A 2x times the sum as n plays its game of my n plus r minus 1, times my n plus r, times my a sub n, I think times my x uh, to the n plus r minus 2. Yes, I'm correct. Plus my x times this sum. I'm going to bring in the form. I'm going to divide by 2x. I suppose I can. I just think it's easier for me not to deal with division and instead deal with multiplication. So you don't have to have the eight in front of it with the one in front of the y double time? Not only is what you're saying correct, I don't have to have it in this form, but I think necessarily, if I've got fractions here, I really don't want it in that form, so I just want to deal with the fractions. Not that I can't, I just think it's easier to deal without. So I kind of like to keep my original, keep that original DE I gave it in that form. I only divided both sides by 2s so that you guys can clearly see that zero is not an ordinary point. So wait, what, why do you have an x coefficient instead of an x plus 1 coefficient? I just yeah. want to separate them. Okay. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to distribute the y prime multiplication of the addition. Okay. And so I guess my next term will be plus the sum as n ranges from here to here of my n plus r times a sub n times x of the n plus r minus 1. I'm missing something. What is that? Oh, it's straightforward y. Is that equal to zero? Now you guys, no, 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 just just to make life easy for me, just wanted to write quite so much. Would you guys not agree that every single term I have on the left hand side has a factor of x to the r? Yes. So if you guys don't mind when I continue writing, you might just divide both sides by x to the r just to get rid of them. Ooh. And so in dividing both sides by x to the r. Let me try wait, to wait, wait. Yes. But aren't you saying, though, that you can't divide by it because if x was equal to 0? The x and the r would never equal 0. But a x could equal 0. Yeah. But since neither my p nor q is really analytic at x equals 0, 
Then let me go, that, that allows it to divide both sides by that Okay, x so now you can start dividing by x's. And I didn't divide by okay. x to the r before because through the differentiation process, I think that r was rather significant in terms of how my coefficients started developing. That's why I didn't get rid of it. Okay. But now that I differentiated and substitute my de, as I continue writing, if you guys are okay with this, I'm also naturally dividing my head both sides by x to the r. Now, if you guys don't mind, can I, can I bring that into the sum? So let me write the first sum. I guess that gives me the sum as n plus its gain. Is that a 2 times n plus r minus 1 times my n plus r? You guys, sorry, but now's the time where you have to pay attention to all my p's and q's. Does that give me a sub n times x to the n plus r, oh, excuse me, n minus 1? Does that give me for my second sum n range from 0 and up? That would be my n plus r times a sub n times x to the n. <coughs> I divided both sides by x to the r. Mm -hmm. Plus the sum of, uh, let's see, the usual game, of my n plus r times a sub n times x to the n minus 1. And lastly, plus the sum, uh, the typical n game of I, a sub n times x to the n. So you guys, it is time for me to dive in and conveniently, conveniently rewrite this as a sum of a single thing, thing and set it equal to zero. So combining all these four sums to a single sum, are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm not ready either. I think we've got to, we've got to... We need to change it. Yeah, I think the n minus 1 exponents are causing problems. I don't think I combine these to a single term unless number 1. I force all the exponents for x to be the same. And number 2, the initial value from an index variable also has to be the same. I do think we have priorities. I think the priorities could deal with the exponents for x first. All right, so I blew it. I guess I'm not ready. Let's you and I dive in. I don't know. Can we just make up a whole new letter? Can we, can we just force all the exponents for x to be a, let's just, just, just k. To do that, I think with the first sum, I'm simply taking my n, replacing it with the, I don't know, um, k, k plus 1. And if I replace every single n with k plus 1, doesn't that give you the following? The sum, as k ranges from, is that going to be a negative 1? On up. Of my 2 times, okay, you guys, i got to slow down. I forgot what I said. If I replace the n with k plus 1, does it give me a k plus r? times a k plus r plus 1, <coughs> times my a sub k plus 1, times x to, oh, look at that, a nice clean power. Next on my list, with my second term, I'm going to actually this time replace n with a, a k. Yeah, I'm being a little silly, you guys, but just to be consistent with my, with my notation, with my variable name, just replace n with k. I think I get this. Plus the sum. What's the game I'm playing? Say it again. K plus one. And that made the case. K raised to negative one on up of my, um, sorry, I'm so slow, you guys. Is that an N plus R plus, excuse me, K plus R plus one? Times my A sub K plus one. Times my X to the K. And finally, here, playing the same game I did with the second sum over there, can I just be silly and just replace them with k? It doesn't change anything significantly. It just changes the name of the variable. You guys, this is slick. Now, when I dive into the sum and pull out that common factor of x to the k, what happens? Wait, hold on. Can this is the same? Yeah, all heck breaks loose. That's what happens. I may have fixed the first problem of forcing all the x1 for x to be the same, namely, it's just that I still can't combine these sums because I don't start at the same value. So you guys, watch me fix this mistake. I should call it a mistake, but let me fix this little uh, mishap. I think one way I can fix it, because k starts at 0 here, over here, let's just replace k with um, n minus 1. That'll, get you That'll just go back to where I was. It doesn't do any good. So I guess I can't play these tricks. 
guess the only thing I can do is maybe shave off the very first term of the first sum in the, I've lost it, the third sum. And maybe if I shave off the first terms, I guess I don't change the exponent for x, but I start out every single sum at k equals zero. Do you Chris? mean subtract those? I don't really mean subtract them. I just mean take off the very, I guess you can put it that way, Chris. I do it this easily. You guys know tricks this time. Watch. <coughs> k is equal to negative 1. I did the first term I generate here. It's going to be the following. Is that a 2 times, whoops, hold it, hold it. Is that a 2 times, is that an r minus 1? Times an r. Times x to the negative 1. Oh shoot, I lost a factor. I really did. Times a sub. Oh, but now that I shaved off the very first term, I think what the heck remains standing are infinitely many other terms, namely all the terms you see inside the sum. 2 times k plus r times k plus r plus 1 times a sub k times x to the k power. It's just that I now get to start the index variable at 0, not negative 1, because I shaved off the first term. So, Chris, when you said subtract it off, I, I think I see what you meant. I think it amounts the same thing I'm now, I think if you guys don't mind, I am not going to touch the second sum. It starts at k equals 0. It's got the appropriate value or exponent for x. I'm going to keep it exactly as is. For the first sum, oh, look at that. Shoot, problems. I still started a k value of non zero. So here, too, you guys, playing the same game, I will take a peek at what this term looks like when k is equal to negative 1, and here's what it is. I think I've got um, an r times a sub. Uh, zero, a sub naught I should say, times x to the negative one. However, the remaining terms are going to be described with the sum as k raised from zero on up of the same darn beast on the inside. And lastly, lastly, I've got plus the sum as k plays this game of my a sub k, x to the k power. You guys, don't let me run them up. Do you see why I took this great action? So I really can combine these three sums into a single sum. Really but nice. what do you think? Mm -hmm. I actually don't know what R is. I don't know why we introduced it. I don't that. either. Okay. I don't okay. either. Um, but you know what? Maybe if you and I use a big deal theorem and take a peek at what you see collectively speaking with the, the red equation, you and I are going to be able to build an equation of one unknown, namely R, and I'll be able to solve for what R must be. I'll even give him a name. I'll call it the additional equation. So I gotta, I gotta confess, he's got a really good point. I'm going through all those cards. I don't even know what R is, and I, I, I promise you, I cannot solve this DE without knowing what R is. Gotta know what it is because look, it's in my original solution or my supposed solution. So I have to somewhere along the way be able to find what R is. The second thing that I have, that I'm just nervous about, is I'm not really sure what we're gonna do with those uh, spare terms. Yeah. Because they won't be part of the power. Even the red ones. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, you combine the other ones, but then you're going to have those two leftover terms. See, I think you're worried about nothing. After all, I've got this wonderful little tool in my back pocket. The wonderful tool I have in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, you got to work out in this class. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That's a power series where the, the exponents for x are, uh, are um, um, non-negative integers. What if they weren't? What if I had an a sub naught plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared all the way up being equal to 0? But what if I had some other terms like um, how about an a sub negative 1 times x to the negative 1 power? I think it still behaves like my big deal theorem. I still think uh, my a sub n has got to be equal to 0 for all values of n that are at least as big as negative 1. OK, so be it. That's not a natural number power. It's a negative 1 exponent. I still think a sub negative 1 times 1 over x, if that's equal to 0, necessarily implies that a sub negative 1 has to be 0. I think it still holds. 
And so I think how to collect those two red groupings, those two red terms up there, is going to allow me dramatically to be able to find what the R values have to be. I'll get there. It's just going to take a minute. Since you guys do seem to agree that at least in black, I'm actually able to write as a single sum, let's write it as such. And in black, I think I've got my sum as k range of zero now. You guys, I'm being honest. I may have I've written a couple of questions, tried it for a few steps. I have no idea what the answer is. I have no idea what the patterns are. So I'm, I'm looking to scratch like you guys are. And I hope it's not that hard. This. And I'll rewrite so you can rewrite it. You guys, I don't know what is in the sum. Um, I know this much. A bunch of stuff. No tricks is fine. Times x to the n, and everything's set equal to zero. Let's just talk about what's been multiplied to x to the n. And you guys allow me singly. I can't. I'm being honest. I think I made a mistake. Um, wasn't it the sum I shaved up the first term for? But did you guys see how my a sub k plus 1 magically changed? So I'm, I'm sorry. That is my mistake. So can I fix it? There really is a k plus 1. Can you take a look at what I'm, I'm underlining? It's not a blue pen. Cheapers. How did Underline. you You made a mistake there. Because when I glance back, I just recognize that I've got four of these black things, but only one of them I had an a sub k plus 1. And I knew I changed two by shaving off the first term. So I, I knew I missed something along the way. So apparently I wrote too fast. I didn't copy down correctly. That's what told me I made a mistake. You take a peek at what's above squiggly line. And how about what's above squiggly line here? Both those terms, I pulled out the x to k already. But I think both these groupings have a factor of a sub k plus 1. I'll pull it out. Let's talk about what's left over. Yeah, but be more specific with your math these skills. What's up there? Two terms that have a common, common, common factor of k plus r plus 1. Can I skip this test since I'm running out of order? If both those terms have an extra factor, a uh, common factor of x to the k plus r plus 1, I'm going to pull it out. And if I do, I think what's left over is, is it going to be a, a 2k? <laughs> plus 2r plus 1? Yeah. I'll, I'll say it again. What's left over is a 2k plus 2r plus 1. Now, I think the rest, the last two sums have a common factor of a sub k. I'll pull it out. I'll talk about what's left over. And talk about what's left over. Whatever I don't have above a squiggle on in black, that's going to give me... Um, the k plus r plus 1? Oh no, I still messed up, darn it. I forgot the red stuff. I'll put it in. And when it comes to the red, two red terms, I've got a common factor of a sub naught, a common factor of x to negative 1. Um, there it is. And what I did not put in is, oh, look at that. What's left over has a common factor of r. I'll pull it out. I'll talk about what's left over. I think what's left over is a 2r minus 2 plus 1, or is that a 2r minus 1? You guys, you double check my rhythm quick. Michael? Um, I'm curious, for the first term in the last step, uh, I see where 2k and 2r comes from, but... Um, the plus 1. Yeah, where's the plus 1 come from? So I did this. So Michael, take a peek at what's above the two squiggly lines. Ignore the a sub k plus 1. I've already pulled it out. Ignore the x to the, sub, x to the k. I pulled it out. And unless you and I write what's left over. I think I've got a 2 times k plus r. I'm so close to the board I can't see it. Times k r plus 1. But I think with the second term I got a plus k plus r plus 1. You guys have many mistakes. Can I just quickly change colors? Again, I'm not changing. I'm just changing color. 
So you guys, let's talk black. Would you not agree that red pieces be multiplied by black garbage? But over here, red pieces be multiplied, is understood, by this black garbage. So, I mean, I'm not exaggerating, just use my math piece of this. If I were just, I don't know, I'll call it the common red factor. Yeah, albeit a trinomial factor, it's still a common factor. Let's try to talk about what the heck remains standing as factors when I pull out the red piece from the two terms on either side of the addition operation in black. I think the black factor remaining from the front is a 2 times k plus r. But what remains standing from the second term is a positive one. And Michael, that's really where that came from. Because now in black you see a 2k plus 2r plus 1, which is exactly what I have there. That's all I did. How could you factor out an x to the n when... I, I, I pull out a what? An x to the what? Yeah, well, look at your nose real quick. That's exactly what I did. He's just, just not looking at it right. Mm -hmm. And so does the uh, sum notation extend to the x to the k? Well, yeah, that's why I got the brackets here. So everything can be multiplied by x to the k. Yes. Sorry about that. So erase my scratch work. I guess this means with that recurrence relation, I guess if I were to take what's inside the bracket, set it equal to zero, wouldn't I subtract this from both sides? Divide both sides by these two pieces. Cancellation with this trinomial factor. I think it basically says that my a sub k plus 1, you yell at me if I'm skipping too many steps, is a negative 1 over 2k plus 2r plus 1 times my a sub k. Notice, yes, Michael. Yeah, I, I did this. I took my k plus r plus 1 times 2k plus 2r plus 1 times base of k plus 1. Plus my k plus r plus 1 base of k, I set it equal to 0. Actually, what gives me the right to do that? The big deal theorem says that this coefficient of x to the k has got to be equal to 0 for all values of k. It's just that when I sail this to the other side, don't I get this? Isn't that equal to a negative, uh, oh, I'm so slow, sorry, k plus r plus 1 times my a sub k. But now when I divide by a sub k plus 1's coefficient, oh, check this out, you guys, this is really slick. I get a, um, a negative k plus r plus 1. All over the product of these two trinomials. Times a sub k. Oh, check this out, you guys, watch, watch, watch. Really slick cancellation. And I think what remains right on the, standing on the right-hand side is exactly what I have here. Okay, you guys, I've got some problems, some serious problems. So I need to take a quick break. Can you guys appreciate yesterday in class with my whole new technique of solving DEs with power series about an, over, uh, about an ordinary point? Do you guys remember how these subscripts typically, not always, but typically separate by genus? which was really slick, because that gave you two different patterns. Which was really slick, because that means going back to my original form of the, of the solution of the DE in power series form, I was able to generate two limited independent solutions, which is really good, because I got a second order homogeneous DE, I need to come up with two, two limited independent solutions. Notice I'm in deep trouble here. These just have a discrepancy of only one. It's only going to generate one solution, I think. Unless, unless maybe I can come up with a couple of different values for R. But at minimum, there's another serious issue that if k is equal to zero, everything is expressed in terms of a sub um, in terms of a sub. Um. I said if k is equal to zero, it's, uh, uh, this is going to be expressed in terms of a sub zero, zero a sub naught. And if a sub naught zero, what do you think is going to happen? I get the trivial solution. So can we make a supposition from the very beginning? I think we need to make the supposition. That a sub naught is not zero. Now, I could have said at the very beginning, but this is my first example. If I did, you would have said, well, what are you doing that for? I wanted to wait here because you can clearly see that if a sub naught is equal to zero, my solution is only going to be the trivial solution. I'm not going to get anything meaningful. Chris? What about it? Isn't it a file that 
True, true, but you know what? That was already used by generating this current relation. That's what allowed it to generate the current relation. I'm not saying the individual a sub i's in this example are going to be zero. I just meant in general, this is going to be zero, which gives me a recurrence relation. It cycles everything back to my basic balance. Oh, by the way, shoot. You take a peek at what you see in red. By the big deal theorem, this thing right here has to be equal to zero as well, right? But using my math D skills, if this what you see above with the red, red brace is equal to zero and A sub naught is non-zero, doesn't that necessarily imply that R times 2R minus 1 is equal to zero? Which means that R is equal to zero or positive 1 half. Look at that. I just generate two R values, which means a single recurrence relation is going to generate two different paths for me. So I will generate two linear independent solutions. I am safe. I'm out of the trap that I thought I was in. And so, so both of our terms would basically depend on which value of R we choose? Thank you. Depending okay. on which value of R I choose, that recurrence relation is going to change. Okay. Which means, oh, thank goodness, it's a second order DE. 